Let's say you are interested in designing some kind of cannon to launch a ball at a particular target X. And in a perfect world in which we had no wind resistance and we could uh, know precisely the acceleration due to gravity and every other variable we could possibly know in the system, we could rely solely on an open loop control system. And in this open loop control system, uh, like a problem you would encounter in an entry uh, classical mechanics physics class, uh, we can tell you exactly what kind of angle theta we would need uh, to launch the ball and have it land at this particular point in t seconds and um, what final velocity we'll have, the magnitude and all these other components and everything's perfect. And the problem with this is it is a naive way of looking at the world and engineers in practice have to figure out ways of how do you deal with non-idealities in your systems and uh, disturbances that occur because in practice as we know you've got wind resistance you've got gusts of wind blowing every which way and in practice things are a lot different from theory and so the motivation for closed loop control is that uh, we need something to be able to take into account disturbances and perturbations that are occurring in our system and react to them. And so the gist of the motivation is that open loop systems is blind or are blind to their environments. They, they can't react to them. They don't respond to the, all these changes. And so with that in mind, uh, we'll go through how we set up uh, these closed loop controllers. And so the first thing we do is we turn to things referred to as block diagrams. And block diagrams are very important um, conceptual tools that we use to understand what's going on. So in this um, example problem, we have a set point, we have a, an objective. We want the ball uh, to hit this X mark on our uh, map or whatever. And so um, in that case, it will be called a set point and we'll define a variable called Y sub SP and um, it will be going into a, something referred to as a sum block. And in this sum block, uh, we are going to be taking into account uh, the air that is present uh, from our system. And so we'll have some kind of objective and there will be a difference from our measured value. And so the whole point of feedback is that we're going to be measuring it. And so this error will be placed into some kind of controller that we're going to design. And these controllers have transfer functions uh, and they're uh, referred to as GC is the name of that transfer function. And um, what the controller does is it takes this error and it maps it to an input U that will go into your process GP. And from uh, the process, we can have an additional sum block in which we take into account disturbances that are occurring in our system or deviations from ideality. And in this case, uh, we'll have an additional uh, component D here entering our uh, block diagram. And then finally, we'll have the actual measured or the actual output where the ball is at any given time. And uh, so the feedback part comes in at this point. And in this example, I will uh, also take into account uh, measurement dynamics with a measurement controller. So um, GM is an important thing to take into consideration if there is a significant difference between um, the actual position and the measured position. For example, if we were, had some kind of instrument that only measured the ball's location every, uh, or it had a certain degree of accuracy, and we wanted to take that into account to have a better model of this entire system, um, taking into account GM uh, would help us. And so to go into the uh, typical transfer function um, derivations that we go through, the kinds of ratios that we're interested in, 
um, it will pay to understand how these block diagram uh, algebra works. And uh, so in that case, what we're going to do is um, note how in this sum block, uh, I'll just finish labeling these streams, um, we define our air E to be equivalent to this YSP, that plus YSP minus YM, the measured value of wherever your ball is over time. And um, a definition of uh, the algebra that it takes place in these control diagrams tells us that um, when we have transfer functions, so take GC for instance, um, GC maps E to U, um, therefore we say that the variable U, or U of S, and these are uh, most of the time written in Laplace transforms, um, which is covered in uh, other ver videos, um, U is equivalent to GC times the air. And uh, continuing on, so we're able to derive these uh, kinds of relationships. Uh, the variable y, our output, is equivalent to d plus gpu. And uh, finally, y sub m is equivalent to uh, gm times y. And so a common uh, transfer function we will be asked to derive uh, would be uh, y over y set point. And what this tells you is how sensitive your output is to changes in your set point changes. And so if we moved the target um, while our process was occurring and we wanted to know how much uh, of an impact that would have on the uh, current state of the system, we can evaluate that like so. And so it, it just involves uh, simple algebra um, once we have defined our um, block diagram equations here. And so uh, a good exercise would be to go through and evaluate these. And what you will find is that y over ysp is equivalent to GC times GP divided by 1 plus GC GP GM. And you'll also note how we let uh, D be equal to zero because D is an external signal and uh, as is YSP, but we're only interested in how Y is responding to YSP. So we uh, discount D uh, in this derivation here. And so another exercise um, that uh, may be useful would be to ev evaluate on your own how uh, sensitive your output Y is to uh, changes or um, deviations that occur uh, in your model. And so uh, I will let you guys calculate that. And uh, finally, uh, to wrap up how these uh, closed loop feedback control um, diagrams work in process control classes, uh, we'll discuss briefly the types of controllers that we use in these kinds of feedback uh, models. And so uh, there are uh, three things to take into account. You will commonly see the uh, term PID, and each one of these terms stands for P proportional. Sorry. <laughs> proportional. I stands for integrating and D stands for derivative. And so uh, with uh, P only or proportional only controllers, they will take instantaneous action uh, against non-zero errors, E, and uh, a key drawback to P-only control 
is that they can't handle sustained disturbances. Uh, or set point changes. And so an example of this uh, in a sustained uh, disturbance would be if we had a continuous wind blowing uh, two degrees north uh, for the entire time that our model is running and our original model did not take that into account. Uh, a proportional only controller cannot handle that. And then a set point change is uh, equivalent to just moving the target. And uh, integrating, integrating controllers are used when we want to eliminate, sorry, eliminate offset. And uh, one of the things you'll note with proportional only controllers is that they do have a certain degree of offset and the magnitude of this offset uh, will be dependent on the kind of problem you're working with, but um, if we are working with very tight tolerances and we cannot have any offset and our model needs to be have a much higher degree of precision, um, we incorporate integrating behavior into our proportional controllers uh, in order to eliminate offset. Integrating controllers by themselves respond very slowly to uh, perturbations, though they will get you uh, no offset. Um, by itself, integrating dynamics is too slow um, commonly to be used in practice. So it's very common you'll see PI controllers um, where proportional and integrating uh, are coupled together in our controller function. And then finally, derivative controllers allow us to anticipate uh, future behavior via analyzing the derivative of your error over time. And so if we uh, take the time derivative of our error function, uh, or our, sorry, how the error is evolving with time, um, we will be able to see trends and be able to anticipate those in some kind of pseudo quasi um, feed forward control. And so uh, another thing to note finally about uh, integrating types of uh, controllers is that they work by summing, they perform an integral, they sum the air. And this allows them to get you no offset uh, in your final model. And so um, this concludes a general introduction to PID controllers and uh, closed loop or feedback uh, control. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.